Will it happen? I think it could. Could it happen? Yes. Will it happen? I think it's likely now. Watching what happened in Nickel, knowing what happened, I think it was last year, early in January. Watching the LME actually stop trading for, for Nickel as it skyrocketed 250 percent over the course of two days. Well, they're now talking about suspending the actual physical delivery of the contract that was due March 9th. There is a bullish story to nickel. Remember, it's an EV, you know, it's a green metal. It goes into the battery. So it's part of that green EV story. So strong demand, no supply. Liquidity in these markets are collapsing. And I want to repeat, collapsing across oil, gas, metals, agriculture. Um, part of that's the higher volatility. Where um, a couple of the big silver ETFs actually changed their perspectives and said, you know, we... Basically, they admitted they were getting very tight on the physical silver supply and they had to alter the perspectives. Top silver experts, what do you make of what happened this week? Well, a lot of volatility, mostly pressure to the upside. We have had some sell-offs, profit-taking, whatever you want to call it. I think there's more upside. I just did a uh, update for um, you know members, free members, actually, for the free newsletter, free e-letter. And I think we've got a couple of dollars to the upside. Uh, I think we'll hit some resistance at around 28. But now these forecasts are the best you can do. And there's so many variables that, you know, something really big happened, you know, some event, some false flag, whatever. I mean, all that technical work means nothing. So I'll say that. Uh, The other part, of course, is what we're going to bring up. And I think oil is something we need to talk about. As far as gold, gold's doing its job. Gold is leading. Gold is more establishment, as I've said many times. Many people, when the risk is on and they want to hedge the risk, they go to gold. They don't think about silver. Uh, it's gold, gold, gold. And that's fine. In fact, uh, you know, that's where most of the money is. I mean, there's, you know, if you're counting in fiat, in gold market dwarfs the silver market. Nonetheless, some of that angst will spill over in the silver market at some point. I think it's already starting, and I do think it will continue, as I just said, but I do think we'll hit a plateau at some point, depending on this Ukraine situation. If things start to calm down, it looks like there could be some negotiations and things are kind of put to bed, so to speak, then we might see, uh, I would expect to see a pull-off in the metals prices. Now, would you say in general, this move in the metals this week has been news-driven and not necessarily fundamentals? That is so tough to know. I mean, I think it's both. I mean, that's been a cop-out. I think it's news. And I also think that uh, fundamental facts around the uh, metals markets have come into question. I know that's the next topic we're going to discuss, but what's happened in the nickel market with the LME and you know, what really takes place there is pretty interesting. And I certainly have some thoughts on that. Tell about the paper market in general, because if the market can just be shut down, then how do we really know what the actual price is? Exactly. And that's where, you know, these things could go away. I mean, I've made the uh, comment many times that, you know, there used to be a milk milk futures market and an egg futures market. And both those are long, long gone. We still have milk and eggs and it's a cash market. And there are ways to hedge without a futures uh, market. It's harder, but it can be done. And so I think it'd be a much more fair market across the sector. I mean, the entire commodity sector, not just the metals markets, the coke, the foods the stuff, the softs, everything if we had a more honest market where the true side of supply demand fundamentals would dictate the price rather than how much paper can be produced that is a derivative of those given commodities. So will it happen? I think it could, could it happen? Yes. Will it happen? I think it's likely now watching what happened in nickel, knowing what happened, I think it was last year, early in January where a couple of the big silver ETFs, actually changed their perspectives and said, you know, we basically they admitted they were getting very tight on the physical silver supply and they had to alter the perspectives. And my shout out to uh, Ronan Manley, uh, the bullion star, for bringing that to everyone's attention. He does uh, some very good uh, deep looks into what's really going on. Uh, taking the palladium as an example, you know, how the price was controlled around $1,000, but now it's around 3000 Would you say that this kind of market if you want to call it manipulation or control, 
can only go on for so long, the long-term trend will still prevail? I do, yeah. Um, you know, if you want to, I'm going to be very conservative here and probably get some people upset, but I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to be as honest as I can. I would say silver right now, and I know this sounds like a broken record, is probably the best place you can put your money for the next decade. The reason I say decade is, you know, I'm old enough where, you know, what, you hear 10 years from now, I don't know, to be determined. The point is, if you're, you know, 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50, the demand side of silver on the industry is so huge that it will corner the market almost by itself. In other words, palladium is 100% industrial. Yeah, I bought palladium and I've sold it. The investment demand on palladium is almost nil, whereas the investment demand on silver was greater than industrial demand in 2020. So that's the dynamic that's different between the two metals. So you bear that in mind, and then you think of silver moving to where palladium is, meaning that the industrial side only is going to take up the whole thing. And I'm not saying it will. I'm saying it's moving that direction from 50% of the market, probably 80 or 85% of the market in the next decade. I think you can see the picture that the price has got to change. And I like what you said. You know, I mean, silver, let's say silver peaks at, and, you know, the numbers are so crazy in silver. So I'll just use my number. I wrote in 2003, 100 bucks. So silver gets 100 and then there's balance or equilibrium in the market, which I doubt, but let's say just as an example, and then it cools off. Uh, well, let's say it goes to 150 and it cools off to 100. It's 100 and stable there for a while, like a year or something. And then as the as the natural squeeze continues with industrial demand and some investment demand continuing, then you will just see it, you know, repriced just like palladium. I mean, palladium, you know, threefold what it was at the all time high, whatever, 10 years ago, silver, I think would absolutely do something similar to that. I don't see silver getting to an area and maintaining a price. I hope it does, but it's not likely Silver has a history from day one of uh, spiking when it's in a market condition, when it's not used as money. So I do expect to see silver overshoot, um, you know, what the market will bear. But it's there's a lot of things that are unknown right now, especially, and I'd like to pick up. Uh, our, you know, this discussion into the oil market. Going to tamp down inflation at all, especially if you know <laughs> energy is rising so dramatically it can't and they cannot put the interest rates above the true inflation rate or let's say the nominal inflation rate which is what you're reporting roughly eight percent they can't really go to ten percent i mean it's possible if they did they would crash the bond market the interest on the national debt would be so astronomically high that it would be unbearable so there's, they're, they're in a box. And so the only way out is for them to reinvent the monetary system, which is what they've been doing with this central bank digital currency and all that's going on in that sector. And there'll probably be some real big debt forgiveness. And I'm sure the bankers have some ideas of how they're going to mitigate the problem and make it sound like it was our fault, but they've got the solution. 